Hello, and uh, we are doing a little chat indoors today. It is Thursday the 7th of April at the time I'm recording this. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm indoors because I, I normally record these chats outdoors. But the other day I was doing it as I was marching about in the field and uh, I sort of bumped into a neighbour who was walking through there and they couldn't really record while I was, uh, you know, talking to somebody. So I put it away and then I didn't really get back to starting it again. And also the weather's been really weird recently, so... Today it kept raining, I didn't want to do it that, you know, getting rain on my recorder and stuff. So, yeah, I'm um, I'm uh, busy sitting uh, and uh, typing away most of the time at the moment, as you probably know, because I've been saying that as a bit of a stuck record for some time, but this book is taking a, uh, a while to come together. And um, I was thinking about it the other day. And it's kind of like a um, like untangling a ball of string. I don't know if you've ever done that. It's quite a pleasurable way of spending some time. But um, you know how you get to these points, different stages uh, during it, where you're kind of thinking, um, oh, I'm never going to get this done. It's impossible. And you're, sometimes you might get angry and want to throw it all away. Um, I've been a bit like that with this book sometimes. But as you know, if you've ever successfully untangled a, a big, big sort of ball of string, it was all messed up. You get to a point where you sort of pass something through one loop and you tug on another little bit and you tease something apart. And suddenly, before you know it, you get to the point where it all just, the, the tangle disappears. It just flops apart and you get this single long thread that you always knew was there. And it suddenly revealed to you, you know, going from one end to the other. And it was there all along and you just had to know how to unpick it. I kind of feel as though uh, writing this mystery has been like that. But I, I, I also want uh, reading the mystery to be like that because I want people to um, perhaps they'll be frustrated with it at times, but stick with it. And in their mind, they'll be like teasing it apart and thinking, you know, this bit could be this and this bit could be that. And then at the end, that'll be that magical moment where I reveal various things that uh, lets it all fall apart into this continuous narrative. And suddenly in your mind it changes. I, I find I'm reading crime fiction. It's funny how the version of the story that you're reading in your mind actually changes. Uh, because you you almost like rewrite history in your mind. And you think, oh yeah, okay, that, that led to that and to that. It's obvious really. It's totally clear. It's always going to be that way. And it's quite interesting, that transformation. It's one of the things that makes the genre really fascinating to read and, and fascinating and challenging to write in. But I think it's one of the rewards as well because you kind of get that um, that nice feeling. And I get quite excited when I, when I can uh, reveal things and when I can send readers down the garden path and um, or lead them up the garden path, rather, and uh, put in red herrings. All that stuff is... Um, it's not easy to write, but it is it is fun when you feel it's coming together nicely now i i really hope that we are almost there i think in the last few chats i said oh we're on the last leg and it is almost up to one hundred and thirty thousand words so it's quite a decent heft of a novel make it good value for money i hope when you uh, when you get to read it and um i think it is it is shaping up i have had some things that i've got to go back into much earlier and check or set up because um, because you mustn't cheat. You mustn't um, suddenly reveal something towards the end that people should have been told at the beginning. That's a bit of a no-no. So, um, yeah, there's been a, a few of those things that I've had to just make sure they're consistent. And that's one of the big things that I check in the rewrite as well. There'd be a lot of checking of that, a lot of going backwards and forwards just to check um, that things are consistent or if they are concealed, that it's reasonable to conceal them. Um, I kind of hate it in stories. I don't know about you, but I hate it when um, people don't say the obvious thing. They don't, you know, they're in a position where somebody could help them or something, and they don't say. They don't just say, oh, by the way, you know, there's, a <laughs> I think somebody's tried to kill me or something, you know, something fairly significant like that, or some rather um, insignificant detail in their life that you, there might be reasons they don't mention it. Perhaps you know it's something of pride or fear or some other overwhelming emotion that uh, stops them stops them mentioning it. But it, it needs to be consistent. 
and consistent with the character and in the context of the story all needs to, to fit together. So I hope this is this is happening and uh, it will all work out in the end. Must be must be there now. I'm, I'm at the point where I can't really think about anything else. I find it very hard to, uh, to sort of switch off from it and leave it um, because I've I've kind of crammed so much of the novel into my head to make sure I get it right that I kind of think if I leave it to one side for too long it won't work and yeah it's it's funny those those challenging times they're often the times when you're kind of in the middle of that you know that tangly bit getting frustrated with it that's often the moment when the the revelation seems to come about and I, it makes sense to me as the writer of it to to just suddenly put something in or take something out or just add something, a little twist or piece of information that will be a reference back to something earlier on in the story. And then readers think, ah, yet that was mentioned in, you know, chapter three or something. And here we are in chapter 53 and it makes sense, you know, it's, and that's kind of where I'm up to. I'm up, I've got to the point where some of the chapters don't have proper numbers yet because we're up to about 53, 54, 55. And I'm kind of working on more than one at once. If you can, uh, if you can get your head around that. Sometimes what I do is I I scribble down uh, a rough version of the scene um, to get it out of my head because I've I've pictured it and so I put in particularly dialogue, put in characters speaking to each other, and that will just get blasted down. And then when I do that, I don't really know what chapter number it's going to be. I have to then sort of slot that piece in see which part of the jigsaw it goes into so that's kind of where we are at the moment and kind of a bit like a jigsaw as well as, as you go on um, the possibilities narrow down like when you when you're starting a jigsaw from scratch then apart from the four corners you don't really know uh, what's going on everything is up for grabs but towards the end the possibilities become narrower and you think okay that's got to be uh, a bit of sky or a bit of blue mug but you know it can't be um, it can't be some other totally different thing um, it has to fit into that, to that kind of place um, so that's where that is um, what else have I been doing I have just been um, reformatting and republishing to all the stores a um, just a slightly nicer looking version of a study in stone. I mean, it's been out a good couple of years now, but um, one of the things that I did with the money that people send me, uh, the kind people who support me with the coffee.com, uh, they, they click go to my website at michaelcampling.com and they click on the buy me a coffee or buy me a mug of tea, I think it says. Um, and of course, it doesn't all go directly into mugs of tea. Um, I use that in ways to help with the production of new books and with the with the um, the jazzing up of uh, older ones so it had kind of been bothering me for a while that I wasn't quite at its best it was the best I could do at the time but since I've got this uh, rather wonderful new software I um, I reformatted it and uh, just made sure everything was spruced up I actually um, took a couple of the sample chapters out. Now, depending when you, you've grabbed your copy, if you've got one, you might have had um, no sample of Valley of Lies, or you might have had uh, three chapters, or you might have had, you know, some other number that I can't remember. Um, now, when I first put it out, obviously I didn't have the next book, so there was no sample. Later on, I, I put a sample, and then I, I increased it... Um, because I thought, well, it's free, so I might. As, my my feeling and my thinking was, well, I might as well give people as much as I can for free, um, and I just totally thought of it that way. Let's let's give people a nice chunk because they're not paying for the book anyway. By that point, the book had become free. It wasn't always free. It was you know like two dollars ninety nine for quite a while, and quite a few people were buying it at that price. But I I wanted to give it away because it is short because it was the first one, and I want to give people value. And I thought we'll give them a bit more value. But it occurred to me after a while that some people might think it was misleading, which is the last thing I want to do, because they might look at the page count and think it was a longer novel than it was. And because it was a the original story was short, the sample chapters bumped it up by a high proportion, um, if you like. 
And I thought, well, I'd, I would hate for anybody to think I was being unfair. Or in any way try to mislead anybody or anything like that or do a sort of, you know, lead people on. Uh, I think giving a few chapters as a preview is very, very common. But uh, I've certainly seen like three chapters given away, particularly if they're not very long chapters. But that would be on a full length novel. And of course, a study in stone isn't. Um, so I have uh, just popped one chapter in um, because I think that's reasonable. It's not a very long chapter. It gives people a flavour if they, they want to just check out. I do think it's good to have a bit of a sample. Not everybody likes them, but the thing is, you've got to remember that a study in stone isn't entirely typical of the ones that come after it. The other ones are much more in the uh, line of the classic traditional um, British murder mystery. And uh, there are murders and so on. I don't want to do any spoilers, but the... The deaths in Study in Stone are historical and we could argue um, whether they're murders or not. Um, but I, I, I can't say much more without without doing a spoiler. So they are not quite in the traditional mould. And that's because, as I've probably mentioned before, I wanted to do like an origin story, if you will, a sort of where do they come from? Not already fully formed. Um, <coughs> excuse me not diving headfirst into a murder, which would be a, a slightly um, unreasonable thing to do, I think. Um, yeah, I haven't done one of these uh, with the, just with the microphone indoors. That's why it's making me uh, my throat a bit dry, just because I should have got myself a glass of water or something. A bit out of practice. So... Um, that is going up to the stores now. It takes different stores and libraries and stuff different times to update. Um, depending where you bought it, you might be offered the opportunity to update it. I, I can't remember how, how the, all the different platforms work. Um, they don't kind of tell you. They don't say, oh, here's a new version unless you, unless you can update it in some way. But I, I can't cover all the different possibilities i guess you could always go to my payhip store which you can find by michaelcampling.com and you can download it from there if you want because i have updated it there and uh, it is free there as it is free everywhere else and you can also get um, the ebook version of death at blackingstone rock uh, the email adventure there if you want to read all the emails one after the other straight away it's more fun to get them via email if you um if you want to take part in that, it is still there. You should be able to find it somewhere on the website um, at michaelcampling.com. It will be there somewhere and you can just sign up and uh, you start getting the sequence straight away. And it's fun. A few people have told me they've enjoyed it, which has really been great to hear um, because you don't know when the episode is going to drop into your inbox. Um, some days you get one, some days you get two. I think, I think you might even get three on one day. Um, <coughs> because they happen in real time. OK, so what else can we report on? Um, been a strange day today with the weather, with cold wind and drops of rain and then bright sunshine a couple of minutes later. Really odd weather here in uh, Devon, but bluebells are starting to come up and we're starting to get lots of wildflowers in the hedgerows. I've just been posting up um, the featured photos on the website. If you're on, if you're a member of the website, uh, it's best if you're a newsletter subscriber as well. But if you're a member of the website, um, you can log in and see them. Joining the website, as always, is totally free and pretty easy. There is um, there are, I should say, over 400 people who are members, and it just kind of gives you the ability to see all the photos and all the content. Um, because they are just for us. I, I'm not particularly interested in shoving masses of stuff out. Um, it feels sometimes like the internet, everybody is kind of shouting at once. There's this sort of, you know, everybody putting everything out. Look at this, look at this, look at this. And I just kind of think, no, if people want to see it, they can sign in. And then they can comment and we can keep things very uh, low-key and relaxed. And, you know, those who want to can do that. And those who don't want to needn't bother. 
I do post pictures on Instagram. You can find me on there and follow me on there. I am moving more and more away from Facebook. Um, that was the other reason of having the membership site is that I, I didn't particularly want to run the Facebook groups uh, because if we did that, Facebook would be pushing their adverts at you and I, I didn't want to get involved in that. So I want, as an ethical choice, I made my own membership site where there's no advertising. Um, you know, I mention my own books as they come out, but I don't I don't try and jam them down anybody's throats. Um, I'll just tell you, like, the special offers and things, which there is still at the moment on Kobo. Uh, there's a one of my books, one of the Devonshire Mysteries, is in a buy one, get one free sale. So uh, I find Kobo a, a good place to buy books. I mean, I I don't get paid anything for saying that. It's it's where I've gone to. I prefer to use using Kobo to Amazon. They seem like a really nice company, really nice people. They they do look after authors. Um, Amazon say they do, but they don't really. Um, it's just the shtick they do. I I don't think they really um care about very much except for um making vast sums of money. But um. I'll leave that to you. You shop where you want. I mean, I buy things at Amazon sometimes just because uh, I live in a remote place and shops aren't always uh, easy to get to here. Um, but, you know, I look around, I shop around, see if I can get something somewhere else as well. Um, you know, for the same kind of price. We all we all have to make our own decisions. But, you know, my books are there. Um, they do a good job of uh, distributing um, e-books. Uh, their returns policy is is not great for authors. There's been a few people complaining about that, and a few quite big authors, quite some big traditionally published names, are complaining about it. And that is a thing. Um, what happens is that a lot of books, um, especially if they're like two dollars ninety nine and above, Amazon actually charges the author a delivery charge. I mean, ha why they have to charge me to sell? to deliver one of my books to one of their customers is is a mystery and so what they also let readers uh, return books whether they've read them or not ebooks you know um, and they give them quite a long time to do it so you will get some people who have latched onto the idea of treating the whole thing like a library and they they will buy the book read it and return it um, at which point my royalties that would have been paid to me are taken away by Amazon, uh, but they still ping me for the delivery charge. So I actually will lose a little bit of money each time somebody does that. And it's just not great. I just think it's a shoddy way to behave. I would never do that. I mean, uh, if I didn't like the book, fine, I chose it. Nobody made me buy it at gunpoint, you know. It's different to if you buy a, buy a toaster and it catches fire, then yeah, you send it back or... You know, I'll order something and uh, I find it's not very well made, perhaps. It turns up and you think, well, that's shoddy. I'm not going to accept it and I'll send it back. But it's kind of, you know, an e-book. I mean, that's just... Anyway, um, OK, that's that me ranting about that a bit. But it, it is a bit unfair. And, and audio books, apparently, it's happening with as well, which is a, which is a nightmare because um, that will really cost authors quite a lot of money. So, um, yeah, and also it's just kind of stealing, isn't it, really? If you've read it, you've you've consumed it. So that's what you paid for, the ability to read it. Um, it's like uh, eating a meal and asking for your money back for the meal. It's a bit, a bit dodgy, isn't it? So I'm sure none of you are listening to this or watching this do that. It's just, uh, you know, if you know somebody who does it, maybe, uh, maybe you could... Uh, fling custard at them or as I put on Twitter the other day you could upturn a bucket of jelly over them and bad jelly not the kind that would stain an, an upturned bucket um slightly so loses it in translation a bit because jelly um I don't mean like jam I don't mean I just mean like fruit set jelly <laughs> I don't what do they call actual jelly in America if they call like jam jelly then what do they call jelly who knows? I always wonder that about cookies as well, because like, not all biscuits are cookies. But so if you call all biscuits cookies, oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, we could be here all day talking about trousers and pants and things, couldn't we? And, uh, 
two nations divided by a common language, somebody said. So, um, these things are good fun. Oh, my screen's just gone into a screensaver. That was a, that was a bit bizarre. Okay. Um, I ought to stop rambling, really. It says 20 minutes on there, and um, that's kind of long enough for anybody to have to listen to this nonsense. I will uh, record another chat soon. I think it's newsletter day tomorrow. I must check, but I think it is. So if you're a subscriber to the Awkward Squad, you'll get that then. And I'll be um, tapping some little message away to you. I tend to do it on the day that I actually send it because it's, um, you know, I want it to be like uh, a message that I'm sending. Um, I do sometimes wonder whether I should reduce the frequency. I mean, it used to be weekly at one point and then it was every two weeks, which is what I'm aiming for now. It does take me quite a while to do. And I know I get people who say, oh, I really enjoy your emails and I look forward to them and stuff. So I don't want to let those people down. But um, I'll probably stick to it. And people who want stuff more frequently, they can always uh, check in on the website because uh, you can see things straight away as soon as they come up. And there uh, should be a couple of things a week at least. Oh, and when we're talking about COBA, I forgot to say there's another sale coming up. Uh, I think it's for the Easter weekend. Um, that'll be on the website later. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it because it is a um, that's a money off sale. And we're all trying to save money, if I remembered correctly. I don't have it in front of me, but I'll, I'll pop the details on the website. Yeah, we're all watching the pennies at the moment, I think, aren't we? And um, trying to decide whether we um, use electricity for this or that. But... Um, Hey ho, I guess we will um, come through it on the other side, won't we? If we uh, we keep our chins up and uh, keep smiling, we'll uh, we'll soldier through. There are people worse off in the world at the moment than uh, than some of us. That's uh, sadly the case, and so our thoughts with a lot of those people at the moment. Um, I I won't go any more into that because I I don't do kind of politics and things in this and current affairs on the whole other than what affects directly, you know, my books and stuff. You don't come here for that, I don't think. Um, I do want to get my writing podcast on the craft of writing going again because I keep trying and I keep sort of um, losing momentum with it. I really want to get that going again. I am thinking of doing a crime fiction one which will definitely be for readers and it'll just be talking about crime fiction really and looking at books that are out and uh, a mixture of independently and traditionally published books whatever um i read quite a bit of crime fiction and uh that's kind of what it will be about so uh might just be me unless i bump into anybody else who'd like to help out with it but uh yeah that'd be quite fun to talk to somebody else about it as well but um yeah it'd be just quite a light-hearted one for uh for readers of fiction not for writers um if you are interested in the craft of writing then the old episodes are still there for it's called writing talk podcast and it's writing talk podcast.com and you can find it on all your usual podcast providers but it hasn't been updated for quite a while and some of the episodes are quite old and so I may have even changed my mind drastically about things going back to some of the older ones I've probably totally changed who knows anyway that's enough rambling I will definitely sign off now thank you very much for taking the time to listen really appreciate it a huge thank you to all the uh, members of the awkward squad who get the newsletter and a massive thank you to the members of the site and an even bigger thank you to the people who send me a mug of tea via the coffee.com uh, buttons on the site. That's really quite a nice uh, way of, of sending me a little little tip if you like what the stuff I'm putting out. And it all helps. It's very encouraging and it supports me in a very direct way in things like software and uh, upkeep of podcasts and websites and all that kind of stuff and uh, promotion of the books and, and so on. Um, I'm not really a big advertiser, but I do a little bit um, to let people know about the books because when I, I got to get readers in, I got to keep people coming in and, and finding the books and that, that enables me to keep writing. If I don't keep, um, you know, 
doing a little bit of uh, selling, then uh, then the, the wheels fall off and the whole thing grinds to a halt. So, yeah, I'm not a spammy kind of person, but there are, there are you know, uh, I usually like book bob ads and things like that. Um, if you get book bob emails, you get little um, little ads on the bottom of the email, little little picture, and it'll recommend a book to you, and that's that's people pay for those. So I, I do those, and that's about it really. Um, oh, I was going to mention I've I've been taking to Twitter a bit more. I've been having a, a go on Twitter as I move more and more away from Facebook, so I can just pop out a little random thought every now and then. You know, a few times a day maybe. Uh, nothing very heavy, just um, no kind of buy my book type stuff, just um, just sort of odd thoughts and silly jokes and things that I think of uh, during the day. It's a bit of a distraction, a bit of a break. I'm having a break from writing. I just want to do some little thing for five minutes. I'll have a look on there and look at some of the people I follow and, uh, and just uh, I might share something there. OK, so I've done all my big thank yous, I think. So... Lovely to uh, chat to you. Must uh, must do this more often. I'll see how the video goes. Hopefully, this will be on YouTube if it's all working. <laughs> Who knows? All right, take care. Look after yourselves and uh, keep smiling. And we'll talk again soon. Bye.